Good morning, fellow Vera Thigh enjoyers. It's your favorite FF14 content creator that you forgot exists. Today I'd like to talk about a topic that I've seen a lot of new players have questions about, and something we FF14 players take as a standard. A static. If you're new to the game, you'll find this term thrown around a lot. A lot of veterans do endgame content exclusively with a static, and you'll often see the term being used contextually when talking about raids and endgame content, so I figured I'd make a video on the topic and maybe help some gamers escape the hell that Party Finder is. In this video, I'll walk you through the different kinds of static that you'll commonly find, the pros and cons of raiding with a static or playing with one in general, the different ways of finding statics, and some of my insights into managing a static if that is your jam. I do have to make a disclaimer here so I don't get flamed again in the comments, but this is not an attempt to discourage anyone to raid in Party Finder or with random groups. I can already tell some dickweed is going to comment below telling me again about how great of a time they have in public groups and somehow never seem to encounter any toxicity in the game. And before you hit me with the obvious, local man playing as a cat girl discovers that an MMORPG is more enjoyable when played together with people you actually like. You'd be surprised at how many people start playing FF14 without knowing anyone else that plays the game, like me when I was a Sprout. So, what is a static? A static is a fixed group of players that play the same content together. I don't know when or where the term was coined first, but if you consider playing with random players in Duty Finder and Party Finder as a dynamic system wherein you get to play with different people every time, a static is just a group of people that always play together. Most static groups start out as friends trying to clear content together and they tend to evolve from there. In games like World of Warcraft, you often engage in endgame content with a guild and your good raid teams are normally made up of guild members exclusively. However, given Final Fantasy XIV's nature of endgame content being designed for 8-man groups, the need for organizing large groups of players only becomes a factor for the Baldesian Arsenal and the Lubrum Regine. Free companies, the equivalent to guilds and other games, are used by a lot of players for social content or aligned interests. There are definitely free companies that focus exclusively on raiding and combat content, and they operate in a much more similar way that some guilds do in World of Warcraft and other games, but a vast majority of FCs I've encountered and have observed are used for social purposes. So before we talk about statics, let's ask the big question, why? Why bother organizing fixed groups of people to progress and clear content when you could just find willing bodies in the party finder? Or you could just get matched with other people queuing up for a raid in duty finder? Getting into a static is like buying health insurance in America. It sounds like a really good idea and it has a lot of effort involved, until you forget about it and then when you really need it and you don't have it, you will suffer from the consequences of your inaction. In the end though, even if you need it and you do have it, it can still find ways to fuck you over, which kind of applies to a static as well, if it's poorly organized or not run properly. Before we continue, this video is brought to you by subscribing way and notification bell way. My goal this year is to continue being a mediocre guide maker, and you subscribing gives me the motivation needed to play the game less and make content more instead. I like to set myself realistic goals, so my only goal this year is to gain one more subscriber. Thanks. If you've ever raided a new raid tier in the first 4 weeks after release, you'll most likely manage to get through the first fight with relative ease, but then you start hitting some walls. Normally either mechanics that require coordination, competent movement, or steep DPS checks. Raiding with Party Finder can be some of the most toxic shit you can encounter in this game. You'll see everything, from people that know fuck all about their jobs and don't know how to press their buttons at all, to people that leave after two wipes, to people that'll flame you for their own mistakes and players that are certifiably brain dead. You'll have players trying to open Party Finder groups for people that have seen enrage on a fight and are trying to clear, only to get trapped in the first heart mechanic. Now before you get your pitchforks and start getting mad, I've also met some really cool people at Party Finder and they were clearly competent at their jobs and nice to boot as well, but the amount of fucking idiots I've had to deal with far outnumber the number of nice players. Great community, by the way. Also I play in a Japanese data center, so my experience is kind of skewed. On that note, my smoothest reclears with Party Finder were with Japanese parties, but that's a cultural thing for a different video. Another big reason for farming statics is because you might want to work on content that simply isn't feasible to run with Party Finder, either because it's too niche, it's no longer popular or no longer current, or simply too hard. For example, if you try to get a group together to get the Blue Mage raid achievements, a static is probably the way to go. If you're looking to go into the ultimate raids for the first time, a static is definitely the way to go. Erm, um, actually, people use Party Finder for ultimates all the time, herder. Yes, I am well aware, I am one of those people that has tried reclearing UCOB with a party fighter group before. Reclearing is one thing, actually progressing and learning the fight is a very different thing. So let's talk about statics. There are all types of statics for different purposes. 
I've been in around 10 statics since I've started playing the game in mid-2020, with my first one being me and three FC mates trying to clear Palace of the Dead together. The most common type of static is a raid static, a group of players trying to clear endgame combat content. These break down into a variety of different groups and I tend to classify them into three different levels, each with varying levels of intensity of sweatiness associated with them. The first tier is the casual static. These are normally raid groups that raid one to three times per week. They're usually not a huge time commitment, maybe one and a half to two hours per session. If somebody can't make it for a raid session, that's fine. If somebody needs to call it early because their kid took a shit on the floor, that's also fine. These types of statics tend to play at their own pace, are normally more fun than anything else and can actually be a pretty good introduction to savage level raiding if it's your first time. These are kind of like the mangas I enjoy reading, pretty wholesome. Often these statics are just a group of friends vibing and having a fun time. Statics like these normally have no expectation of clearing the latest raid tier within the first two months of release and that's cool. I've been in a casual static once before and I realized that's not the kind of approach that I enjoy in endgame combat content, but each to their own. Casual statics are often made up of FC members, of random friends you got together, friends of friends, that kind of thing. The next level up is the mid-core static. These are a level above casual statics and probably the most common ones you'll find in recruitment posts on Discord, on Twitter and on Reddit. Which also makes these the wild wild west of the organized raiding scene. Raid hours tend to go somewhere from 9 to 12 hours per week. Common schedules here include 2 hours per day for 5 times a week, 3 hours per day for 3 to 4 times per week, sometimes even more flexible hours on weekends. This is normally the kind of static I find myself playing with. And these are the kinds of static that come in a large variety of different flavors. You can have anything from people raiding their first Savage or Ultimate, looking to get their first, you know, endgame raid experience, all the way to the veteran raiders that don't care about clearing quickly anymore. Mid-core statics can take anywhere from 2 weeks to 5 or 6 weeks to clear the latest Savage tier, all depending on the party's expectations and collective raid competence. Ultimates can take much longer, depending on how fresh the group is going into a fight, how well they're geared and how long a fight has been out for. To give you an example, my ultimate static took around 36 hours spread over 4 weeks to clear Uwu, with several people who had already cleared and everyone being at a comfortable savage level of raiding. Other mid-core statics can take 3-4 to four months to get an ultimate clear in, especially for fights like Yukob and T. These statics are normally made up of players that are looking for a challenge, but don't want to deal with the randomness of Party Finder, but also don't want to glue themselves to the game every day of the week. I like to think of the midcore static as the adult gamer's preferred approach to endgame content, kind of like a good set of spicy chicken wings, intense enough to make you care, but not enough to make you cry on the toilet by the end of the night. The next level up, the, uh, the highest level of the rating statics, is the hardcore static, and now we're getting into the real gamer territory. This is where things get sweatier than the ass cracks you see at a Magic the Gathering tournament. Hardcore statics tend to differentiate themselves in two ways. They tend to be made up of players that have reached a certain performance standard in the game, and they have significantly higher time commitments. The most common hardcore static you'll see is what's referred to as a week 1 group. These statics will attempt to clear a Savage Raid tier in the first week it releases. This is naturally rather challenging, as there are no established strategies, and you're progressing a fight blindly for the most part. These statics normally have pretty steep entry level requirements and will spend anywhere from 8 to 12 hours a day raiding until they get their clears. There's also plenty of week 2 groups that take it easier but they're still going as hard as they can to get a clear for the whole tier by week 2. The next level up from these statics inside the hardcore category are the world first contenders. These are the sweatiest of gamers with the biggest galaxy brains. These men and women are on a mission to pimp slap the latest raid tiers with no exception. They take offense to the fact that Square Enix thinks they can design a fight that'll actually make them feel something. These are the gamers that casuals hate because they represent a part of the spectrum that encourages people to play the game's combat content to the absolute fullest, including the scary concepts of healers need to deal damage and damage meters. These groups tend to grind for up to 16 hours on release day and if they don't clear by then, they sleep, they shower and they get straight back to pulling as soon as they can on the next day. With the next ultimate tier coming out relatively soon, we'll see how many days the biggest brain raiders in the game need to clear the latest clusterfuck of mechanics that Square Enix can come up with. I'll talk about how to get into statics in a while, but obviously these hardcore statics don't just recruit random people from Party Finder. These groups normally require proven mastery of a job, experience from previous raid tiers and a really strong mental fortitude, all of which is a pretty rare combination of traits to have in a competitive setting. Aside from the typical raid statics, we also have some niche ones. 
Speedrun statics are groups that focus on optimizing approaches to raids to clear them as quickly as possible, which often also coincides with dealing as much damage as humanly possible, resulting in some pretty big parse numbers. These normally don't have high time commitments and tend to form later in the tier, but the job mastery required to get into them is quite high. These are the people that'll spend days in spreadsheets to figure out how to squeeze another 0.6% DPS out of everyone, how to heal the least and cheese mechanics the most. There are deep dungeon statics that focus on clearing or farming piles of the dead in heaven on high. There are blue mage statics, which are normally trying to clear the savage raids on blue mage for achievements and mounts. I'm in one of those as well, trying to get the marble mount. There are statics for farming treasure maps, because those can yield a lot of money. There were PvP statics for the feast, but I'm assuming these will rise up in popularity again when the new PvP content comes out. One of my friends has a cafe hopping static where they get together on a regular basis to go around the data center in search of nice RP venues to appreciate the design and furniture. I'm sure there's many other niche groups because at the end of the day, a static is just a group of people that band together to achieve a shared goal. Now, despite my jokes, there are pros and cons to playing or raiding with a static. I know that I said that Party Finder can be some of the most cancerous shit you can imagine, but a poorly organized static can be worse in many ways, so let's look at the pros and cons here. Starting off with the pros, you don't have to deal with a lot of the randomness and inconsistencies of Party Finder. You're playing with the same people every time, you'll get to know the people you play with, and from there you gain a pretty good understanding of what they're like and what they're capable of. Hell, you might even make a new friend or two, which I know sounds revolutionary for my fellow 20-something year olds that haven't socialized with anyone since 2019. Raid statics normally have a loot distribution system, so you're much less likely to get fucked by bad loot rolls and get geared quicker, in most cases. Voice communication. You'll find that a lot of the raids are much, much easier with someone calling out mechanics and just being able to coordinate basic raid gameplay. Fun. If you're like me and enjoy bantering and just having interesting conversations with uh, your friends during the polls, these type of interactions are pretty standard in a static. Strategy. A raid static can opt to not use whatever the latest dumb party finder strategy is. You can approach fights in ways that suit your team composition, try different strategies for reclears, learn uptime strategies for parsing, and so on. Party finder tends to default to whatever strat has the lowest margin for error or requires the fewest amount of brain cells, but that doesn't mean a strategy is necessarily good. Now I could go on and on here about the pros, but I'm sure you can imagine why it would be more fun raiding with an organized group on voice chat rather than with random people that'll flame you for attempting to use a raid macro while playing in North America or Oceania. On the other hand, let's look at some of the disadvantages of raiding with a static. A static is only as good as its weakest link. Especially in a raid setting where you're trying your hardest to clear, all it takes is for one person to not be on top of their game and you'll feel trapped. In a party finder you can just leave whenever things are going poorly or someone's holding the group back, which you can't do in most static environments. Given that almost all endgame content is for 8 or 4 man groups, one person not pulling their weight is felt really easily across the whole party. This also extends to a static's vibe and social aspect. One toxic member can kill motivation real fast and make everyone feel trapped in a pretty shitty environment or just a bad experience. You'll hear lots of stories about static drama, I've heard some wild stories from ranging to the raid leader ninja looting to static members getting into arguments over female static members depending on the nature of the static so this shit can get a high school level real fast. Pace. Raiding with a static that's generally slower to pick up mechanics or get good at a fight that you feel like you've mastered quite quickly can be a little demotivating as you're waiting for others to catch up. Being locked out of party finder. Since you're raiding with a static, you can only really clear with the static. You can't just decide to jump into a party finder group and raid with other people while the loot is still inside the weekly lockout system, otherwise your group won't be able to get its full loot when you clear as a static. There are ways around this, of course. For example, my static raids on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, so if we don't clear a fight by Thursday evening, you can continue to raid with others from Friday to Monday and get a clear without the group. Next point, commitment. Statics normally have set schedules, so if it's a raid day, it's a raid day and you gotta go raid, even if you're not in the mood for it or feel like doing something else. Since it's hard to find substitutes on short notice, you don't want to be the person that cancelled last minute and forced the group to use Party Finder, which can be a nightmare, especially if you're not using the standard Party Finder strategies. And just like with the benefits, I'm sure you can think of many other ways where raiding with a static can end up worse than just thugging it out with randoms. 
I have plenty of horror stories, but I'll save those for a different video. On to the second to the last topic, finding a static. Finding a static can be a real fucking adventure too. It's kind of like Tinder, in the sense that you don't feel good enough for anyone and are genuinely surprised when someone gives you a shot. It is worth noting that if you're applying for mid-core and hardcore statics, you'll probably need to have at least mediocre level FF log parses as proof of experience. Nobody wants to raid with someone that has no idea what they're doing. As mentioned, a lot of statics start as an extended friends group, but that's normally for casual ones. If you're looking for a static for a specific purpose, there are a variety of places you can look at. The first and probably most common one is Discord. Most data centers have discords dedicated to raid static recruitment. They normally have looking for group and looking for member channels, so you can advertise yourself or your group there. The elemental one tends to be very active and I've recruited from Discord before to varied levels of success. Reddit is also a good place to look as a lot of people advertise themselves and their statics on different subreddits. The FFXIV recruitment board is a good place to start. I've personally not recruited from there before, but I've heard good things, so take that however you may. A lot of people tend to advertise themselves and their groups in Party Finder too. I often see people putting up LFG and LFM ads on the Party Finder. I've personally never recruited anyone this way, but it's worth trying if you're not inside an instance and don't have anything else, might as well put up a Party Finder. Twitter and Facebook could be good places to look at as well. What you see on Twitter largely depends on who you follow though. I often see a lot of retweets for hardcore statics looking for members, but they tend to be for North America and Europe. Facebook might be a good place to check as well, as there are a shitload of FF14 groups. This does come with the downside of having to use Facebook, which is cringe by default. But hey, if you're desperate enough to look on Facebook, then you're probably running out of options anyway, so might as well. My pro tip is though, if you're struggling to find a static, it's time to make a static. I've generally had better experiences with statics that I've organized myself or were organized by friends of mine that I trust to run a tight ship. It'll create additional management work for you overall, but this way you get to tailor make your static experience to not suck. And the last thing I want to talk about is managing statics. This video has once again far exceeded the scope I originally planned to cover, but hey, that's my critical personality flaw. And uh, yes, I'll make a separate video about this because I struggle to come up with good content ideas and this is maybe one of them. Being a static leader requires the level of patience and mental fortitude you normally only find in kindergarten teachers, social workers, and endgame glamours that unironically farm Stormblood Alliance raids for glam. The first thing I want you to know about running a static is you need to set very, very clear, very explicitly stated expectations. They should cover what you're attempting to achieve, what's expected of every single member inside the group, and generally what you need everyone to do. The fastest way for a static to die is to have misaligned expectations, which normally snowballs into attitude problems, arguments, and people not being on the same page. I've made this mistake several times before, where I thought the expectations were clear by the nature of the goal, but that was a horribly short-sighted assumption to make in hindsight. So if your goal as a mid-core static is to clear a raid tier by week 3, and you expect people to review world first clear videos, get intimately familiar with their optimal rotations and openers for each phase of the fight, then that needs to be clearly said. If you want people to contribute in voice chat, that has to be said. In Elemental, it's very common to have statics where everyone's in a Discord channel during the raid, but not everyone's talking. And that's perfectly fine for me, but it might not be for you. In my current Savage static, only three of us actually talk. In my last Ultimate static, only four of us spoke. So the kind of communication you want inside your group that has to be you know, a clear expectation set at the beginning. Almost every raid static I know of has a loot tracker of some sort, where everyone enters their best in slot items and loot is tracked and distributed accordingly. Loot priority is almost always DPS over tanks and healers. A simple Google Sheet is plenty and that's what I recommend everyone to use. Scheduling is often the other big wall. Some statics decide they are scheduled before they open recruitment, so applicants are automatically filtered by availability. Others will decide on a schedule once they finalize their members and only have vague times set during recruitment. There are plenty of tools you can use to figure out when people are available. I personally use when to meet because it's nice and simple and that's what I'm used to from college. I think it was Zeno who said on a stream of his that the real challenge in endgame raiding is not to complete the fight, it's to organize 8 people's schedules and I 100% agree. The last thing I want to touch on here is the vibe check. Depending on the statics members, each group tends to gel differently and this can be the ultimate success factor. 
I tend to prefer my statics to be pretty chill with banter, memes and a decent balance between fun and progression. Regardless, you'll most likely have drama at some point. Someone's upset at someone else, someone's mad at themselves, someone's internet is dying 10 minutes before the raid and people are unhappy they have to wait, someone might feel offended because a group member gave them feedback and they took it emotionally. I've had all of these things happen at some point. I haven't had any real cringe drama like static members being romantically involved or some shit like that, but I've heard enough horror stories. Well, there you have it. Now you know everything you need to know about FF14 statics, what they are, how they're managed, why they're good, why they're bad, and where you can find one. I encourage everyone to try raiding and completing endgame content in a organized environment. I have by far the most fun that way. But uh, if you want to go and YOLO in the duty finder or the party finder, that is your prerogative. If you are a new player, as I mentioned at the beginning, some of the most enjoyable times in this game is when you played with other people. That is the nature of an MMORPG. And yes, local man realizes it's more fun to play with friends than to play with strangers. For those socially less inclined people, if you don't have any friends to play FF14, you don't know how to make any friends, then how about you polish those FF logs, you join a static, and uh, maybe you make some friends along the way. I've made some really good friends with some static members of mine that I've only met through raiding and uh, it makes the game more enjoyable for me. But yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. If you liked this video, please subscribe. If you didn't like this video, I don't care if you dislike it or not because no one can see those dislikes anyway, so fuck it. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Uh, you can drop on my stream at twitch.tv slash allsohard. You can follow me on Twitter for excellent memes and random rants about the game. And um, yeah, if you subscribe to this video, uh, your parse luck will increase by 10%. Uh, I guarantee it. Yep, definitely. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Peace.